a few tips on getting started with Elliot Cole's Even Song. Now, since this is a chorale, we want to give the impression to the listener that we have the ability to sustain our sound throughout the entire piece. Now, there's a few ways that we can achieve this. First off, we want to make sure that we have a smooth roll stroke. And in order to have a smooth roll stroke, we want to have a continuous motion that's initiated from the wrist instead of locking up the wrist and using the arm. So here we have it with the wrist. And here's locking up the wrist and using the arm. So using that fluid motion will help give the listener not only audibly but a visual representation of that smooth sound and that smooth motion. Another thing that will help is to have a consistent roll speed. Now it doesn't have to stay the same throughout the piece depending on the volume or where you are on the instrument but if you're going to speed up try to do it gradually rather than having sudden jumps in the roll speed and a good way to work on this is to take major chords that move up chromatically that were in the book previously and just to simply practice having a smooth acceleration of the roll speed as you get higher up the instrument. So we'll start with a fairly slow one down here. And as we get higher, we're going to gradually speed up. exercise is making gradual changes in dynamics. One thing about this piece specifically is the overall lack of written dynamics. You just have a piano in the first bar and then about two-thirds of the way through you have a mezzo forte. So that's going to allow you to be very creative as far as what you do dynamically. Now what you should do is to find points that you find important. For me, two of the most important points are found in measure 8 and also in measure 17 where you have a nice resolution. So you want to take those major points in the music and build up to them, arrive at them, and then fall away from them. And a way you can do that is through gradual changes in dynamics rather than sudden jumps. So that will also contribute to the audience hearing a nice smooth chorale. Now a good way to learn this is by taking the rolls out completely. And what we're going to do, instead of rolling, we're going to take the chords and play them block chords with a specific note value. And in this case, let's try 16th notes. So if we're here, we're going to practice first phrase by not rolling and just playing 16th notes. to let you learn the piece without having to worry about the rolls. Now in chorales, it can be very easy to get lost in the rolls. And what I mean by getting lost in the rolls is that the tempo gets lost because we're so focused on rolling and figuring out where we have to go next that the tempo starts to suffer. Now even though the tempo is a little slower and there isn't quite as much activity, activity, activity excuse me, rhythmically, we still have to have that consistent tempo going throughout the entire piece. So learning it that way as block chords will allow you to learn all the, the notes 
and the musical things that you may want to do while still keeping that tempo. And as you transition back into the roles, your hands will know what to do and you'll have the tempo in control and it won't, you, won't have, you won't get lost in the roles. Another thing to keep in mind are the use of which voice you want to bring out. Now in the first two phrases of this piece, the important voices are in the middle. So you wanna keep those lines in the forefront with the outer two voices playing more support roles. In the last third of the piece, it's pretty clear that it switches specifically to the right hand. So we wanna bring out that right hand by playing it just a little bit louder than the left hand so that the audience can hear that melody. Now throughout this, I'm using pretty soft mallets. That's what I like to use for corrals. If you don't have soft mallets, if you only have maybe one or two uh, sets of mallets, that's totally okay. Um, you may just have to experiment with where you're hitting it on the bar, the mallet angle. Sometimes, um, and this is true in percussion in general, sometimes we just have to you know, do the best that we can with what we've got. If you've ever had to play an Easter service gig at a church with timpani that haven't been looked at in a couple years and you only have two of them, and you need four. Sometimes we just have to do the best we can with what we've got. But I like to use soft mallets, and if you don't have them, that's totally okay. Just experiment with the sounds that you can get and also the room that you're in. Um, I'd like also to thank Elliot Cole for writing this piece for me. I've really enjoyed working on it, and I hope that you'll enjoy working on it as much as I have. Thank you so much, Elliot.